You're a business owner. Check. You have business owner's insurance. Check. And 10 years ago, that went about enough. Today, small businesses are being targeted and taken down by hackers. Medical offices, consultants, CPAs, any business that's built success has everything to lose. You probably have cybersecurity installed on your computer. Check. But you probably don't have cyber insurance. Coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised. Cyber policy covers that gap. Cyberpolicy.com shops the leading cyber insurers to find you the right policy at the right price to avoid a catastrophe. Coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised. Get a custom quote today in just four minutes. And for a limited time, use the promo code BLOGTALK to get Norton's small business protection for up to five devices. Free when you sign up for cyber insurance. Plan. Prevent. Insure. Visit cyberpolicy.com. That's cyberpolicy.com. Hi, this is Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter, and you're listening to No BS Hiring Advice Radio. Sunday, Super Bowl, exciting game. A bad call at the end, quite obviously. Um, but when all is said and done, you know, I've been talking with job hunters about some of the lessons that you can take away from the game. And I think there's a, there's a couple of real good lessons that you as an HR professional or hiring manager uh, or small business owner can take away as well that it could help you make better staffing decisions. Uh, because to me, you know, again, without going into and so repeating myself here, I believe hiring doesn't have to be as hard, difficult, painful, or, set, or take as long. It's just that most of you have systems in place that make it more complicated than it needs to be. Now, this show has two sponsors. The first one is Audible. And if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash the big game hunter and sign up for a free trial, you'll be able to get a free audio book as part of that trial. I know you like audio. You, know, you listen to this podcast and perhaps my other ones like Job Search Radio or No BS Job Search Advice Radio. My other sponsor is ConsultingAssignments.com. And that's a site where you can find and fill consulting assignments, full-time consulting positions, temp, temp to permanent contract hire opportunities anywhere in the world completely free. Posting a job or a resume is free. Searching jobs and resumes is also free. The ability to contact one another is also free. The only thing the site charges for is if you want to feature a job or a resume, it is, get this, $10 for 30 days. And if you're going to feature more than one job, they'll take the price down from there. So, again, consultingassignments.com. Now, you know, the, the, there's a, an obvious big play. So let me just review the, uh, what took place. Two plays before, uh, Malcolm Butler is beaten on a ball over his head with the receiver lying on the ground on his back. The receiver kicks the ball, hits the ball, juggles the ball a half a dozen times before catching it, trying to run a little bit further. He's tackled at the four. Uh, Running play to Marshawn Lynch takes the ball to the one, and then the call in question, uh, Wilson uh, tries to throw a slant, a quick slant, and Malcolm Butler steps in and makes the interception. So that, that's the data of the game. Now, let, let's look at a couple of the, the lessons uh, from this. Now, the first one, Butler says in one of the post-game interviews, uh, and I think this is a great lesson for you as a hiring manager or HR person, uh, because what I'm finding with a lot of clients is that, you know, frankly, they're not doing as good a job as they can in evaluation. So uh, let me give you the key message that Butler gave at the end of the game. So he's got the, uh, uh, the on-field reporter sticking a microphone uh, in his face. And... The reporter is asking questions. How did you know the play was coming? What were you thinking about? And Butler says these words that I think all of you should pay attention to. I know I am. I think you should as well. It was all in the preparation. Catch that one. It's all. In, it was all in the preparation. Now, with regard to the play, that translates into, in practice, they reviewed that formation. He had been beaten on that formation 
once before when they played previously early in the season, and he was told, move up. Don't stay back. Move up on the coverage and attack the ball. Guess what he did? Attack the ball. For you as a hiring manager, as an HR person, what's the preparation that you're going into in order to evaluate and find talent? Are you working with a standard playbook that every employer in the country has, or are you doing anything different? Now, let me give you an example from pro sports, and particularly these two teams. Here's the standard playbook. The standard playbook says you draft a number one player and you make them into a starter, and that number one uh, draft pick uh, is, if they play the line, they're a big moose who's fast, uh, and... Uh, you know, they're going to anchor that position for years. Uh, not New England or Seattle really work by that playbook. Here's a couple of examples of that. I'll start with Butler himself. Uh, and I want to just check my notes on Butler because uh, it's a fascinating background. So when you look at Butler's background, you know, he played high school ball in Mississippi. Okay, great. He goes to college at Heinz Community College, which lets me know, you know, he didn't have great grades in high school because he was playing football. Fine. You know, he gets 22 tackles and one inter interception, and he's kicked off the team after the fifth grade. Some infraction, obviously. But he's invited back as a sophomore and plays an entire season, gets 43 tackles over the course of the season, three interceptions and 12 uh, 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 pass breakups. He then transfers to this football powerhouse, ready? University of West Alabama. <laughs> now, this is a football powerhouse. If you're not getting my, my sarcasm here, you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to be as sarcastic as I can. So you know, he finishes a season there, and eventually he's an undrafted player coming out of uh, college. No team in the National Football League, all 30 some odd teams, pass on him after seven rounds. Let's say there are 30 teams. I know there's more, but let's do simple math. Seven rounds, 200 dra 210 draft picks go by. He isn't chosen. So he's signed by New England. Why? Why is this player signed by New England? They went looking for players that could fit into their environment and do things of a certain nature. They didn't need to get a top player to be a backup. They needed to get a decent player to be a backup. And boy, that decent player turned in a performance, didn't they? So, you know, here you have a decent player at a school that no one's ever heard of that makes the key player the Super Bowl. Now, I want, to, I want to show you a couple of things about Seattle. Now, if you watch the first half, there was a receiver there by the name of Chris Matthews. Big, tall guy. He's taller than the guy covering him. First half, catches a couple of balls, including uh, touchdown passes. Incredibly visible. Why is he incredibly visible? Because in the course of the season, guess how many passes he caught? Zero. Zero passes. As a matter of fact, when it came time for Seattle to sign him, he was working at a Foot Locker store. And he had to take time off to be able to go to Seattle and sign the contract. So, you know, when you look at this guy, and then, of course, Russell Wilson. You know, Russell Wilson, who's the Seattle quarterback, you know, you have to understand, Wilson played ball in North, at a school in North Carolina, did pretty well, but he was a, a two-sport kind of guy. You know, he wanted to play baseball, too. Uh, so in his sophomore year, he signs a contract with the Rockies. Uh, and I'm sorry, after his junior year, he signs a contract with the Colorado Rockies and uh, decides he's going to play minor league ball. Uh, and his coach tells him, can't do that, your choice, but... You know, ultimately, he's not thrilled, and they release him from his scholarship obligation. And he signs in Wisconsin, where he does a good job, but this is a number three draft pick because he's short. He's always been a winner every place that he's gone, but there are a lot of guys like that. You know, 
the joke from TV used to be about Al Bundy, a married with children, who's a you know high school football uh, player, uh, and, and you know was the star of the high school football team. There are a lot of these folks around the country, but there was something that, that caused Seattle to take him with the third pick. They had an unsettled quarterback situation. They ultimately signed someone in that uh, free agent uh, crop whose name was Matt Flynn, uh, who had played for the Green Bay Packers, had a great reputation as a backup, and they wanted to give him a starting chance. They signed him, and they draft Wilson. By the end of camp, Flynn is hurt, Wilson's starting, and they never go back. So understand that from the standpoint of hiring, the traditional playbook works, obviously. But to only rely upon that playbook is lazy thinking. I want you to hear that again. It's lazy thinking. You see, your organization is going to need more than just, quote, exceptional talent or to go with safe picks. You need to really understand more about the kinds of schools your people go to work for, uh, go to school for, uh, uh, get their education at, the kind of organizations in your area, and the experiences people have there. So when you're interviewing people, you know, I want you to start collecting data on the work environment at those firms that these people are coming from. You know, what was it like going to school where you did? Uh, what kind of programs did you have? What did you cover there? And I'm not talking about you know, just the you know, 22-year-olds or the 21-year-olds graduating now. I want you to think about the professional staff, the people with four or five years of experience asking this question, and start to collect the data about what those experiences were like. And then from there, start talking about, you know, what it's like working at the firm. Now, I'm not just talking about a person's role, responsibilities, accomplishments, technology utilized, and metrics. You know, the stuff that you use to interview someone and evaluate them. But I want you to start collecting data on your competition and get a sense of what their environments are like. Because you may hire some of these folks for objective reasons, but there may be people in those organizations who are exceptionally good B minus performers who can do solid work for your organization, but you don't know about them because you don't really recruit you know, for people with those skills, but they're adaptable. They can fit within your framework. They can fit in your environment and they'd be thrilled to have an opportunity like the one that you can afford them. Think creatively. You know, again, Malcolm Butler, great example. You know, undrafted rookie, not designed to be a lead player, but a complementary player makes the, the play of a, game, uh, of a lifetime. You know, again, um, the wide receiver uh, on Seattle, uh, Chris Matthews, who's pulling in balls because you know, he's a big guy. The corners are shorter, and suddenly there's a huge height advantage, and Wilson's throwing the ball up high where he can get it, and the defender can't. Where in your organization could you think creatively, bring smart people in from other organizations, and just train the heck out of them? Because, frankly, the cost of training the heck out of them is less than what you're paying me, right? You know, you're, you know if it's a $100,000 person, it's a $20,000 fee, $25,000 fee, depending on the nature of the role. Isn't it worth it to spend three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 to train the heck out of someone, have them work with a mentor to become exceptional? I think so. And you should too, because this is a lesson learned from this game that you should really take. It's all in the preparation. This is not just simply something you do one time, two times, five times. You do it in every interview. And what am I talking about from the standpoint of time? Three minutes to learn about another organization and how they do things. So just to start to work questions in that help you understand what the environment is like that people are working in. Collect that data, make it searchable and retrievable so that as you're evaluating other people going forward, you have what I think of as an unfair advantage over your competition. You know how to sell them, you know how to promote the environment, and you can start 
pointing to successes of people like them in your firm that make it will attra- make it attractive for them. So I'm Jeff Altman. I hope you found this show interesting. I also want to encourage you come over to my website, which is thebiggamehunter.us. I've got a lot more no BS hiring advice that you can watch, listen to, or read that'll help you do an even better job of staffing. I also want to mention that if your firm is trying to hire someone, send me an email. My address is jeffalpin at thebiggamehunter.us. Let's set up a time to speak. I'd love to help you with staffing. Uh, Or, of course, you can call me. My number is 646-374-8656. Last couple of points. If you want to get to know me a little bit better, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, The address is linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash the big game hunter and follow my firm the big game hunter incorporated you know you'll you know get videos uh, you'll you'll learn more about me and my thinking from that this is jeff altman have a great day take care you're a business owner check you have business owners insurance check and 10 years ago that went about enough today small businesses are being targeted and taken down by hackers medical offices consultants cpas any business that's built success has everything to lose you probably have cybersecurity installed on your computer check but you probably don't have cyber insurance coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised cyber policy covers that gap cyberpolicy.com shops the leading cyber insurers to find you the right policy at the right price to avoid a catastrophe coverage against loss and damage if your data is compromised get a custom quote today in just four minutes and for a limited time use the promo code blog talk to get norton's small business protection for up to five devices free when you sign up for cyber insurance plan prevent insure Visit cyberpolicy.com. That's cyberpolicy.com. Ready to make fashion fireworks? Right now at Old Navy, get up to 60% off the entire store during Old Navy's red, white, and new sale. Save big with items for $2, $4, $6, and $8, including women's tanks for just $2. And up to 60% off summer essentials like flip-flops, tank tops, swimwear, and shorts. Get more bang for your buck with up to 60% off your favorite all-American styles right now at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Select styles only. Entire store offer valid 628 to 75. Excludes clearance, gift cards, register lane items, jewelry, today-only deals, two-day-only deals.